A to Z here on Locked On Sports Atlanta, free on YouTube and wherever you get your podcast. Search Locked On Sports Atlanta. Wrapping things up here on this Friday, uh, we have some interesting things to get to with the Atlanta Falcons uh, and some comments from their offensive coordinator that I did not expect to hear uh, coming out of OTAs. We'll get to that in just a minute. But now, time for Shovels of Wisdom. Brace yourselves, because it's time for the Shovel of Wisdom. Yeah, you know how we do it. Every day we hand out a shovel of action. We read up that they had to bring it. You can do so as well on my Twitter account. I'm going to just use the hashtag shovel of wisdom. Today, my shovel goes to James Anastasio. I have no idea who James Anastasio is. And I'm going to put it down if I'm not 100 sure. I know that this is James Anastasio. But I saw this on Twitter. I often, you know, don't like to do these things to myself, so I can do So, uh, there's a guy named Scott Coffin, who's a super Scott Coffin fellow. Uh, and this guy, my friend, kind of has been to do. The staff of the Rangers, like the game last night, in five of the Eastern Conference Finals, and the U.S. Rangers, and the U.S. Rangers, and the the Rangers ended up losing that game, including that game, all the way to the final two minutes, uh, and that's a good goal, and the other thing, and the other thing, and the other thing, and the other thing, to the Stanley Cup Finals. Now, uh, this Scott Kaplan tweeted a video of the fans leaving Madison Square Garden, and he has a video of a young man wearing a red Rangers jersey, even though they're blue. He has a red Rangers T-shirt on. It's like a T-shirt, whatever you call it. And uh, you can hear people talking in the background, and as he's walking and following the guy, he sees this man in the red shirt, who is presumed to be James Anastasio, turn around, roundhouse left hook a lightning fan and knock him out cold on the ground. Uh, and when I say out cold, I mean out cold. Uh, obviously, the victim, uh, you know, it went, uh, I'm sorry, the victim was not okay. <laughs> uh, there were reports that he went to the hospital, um, had a concussion and everything else. I don't know if that's 100% true, um, but nonetheless, um, that young man, and I tweeted it out, he needed to be caught, needed to be found out who he was, needed to be arrested and go to jail. It's absolutely ridiculous. And according to a reporter in Tampa, Evan Axelbank, his Twitter account says, confirming James Anastasio, 29 of Staten Island, was arrested and charged with two counts of assault, two counts of disorderly conduct, and two counts of harassment. And I hope that's true. I mean, who are these people nowadays who are still starting fights, grown men who are still starting fights at professional sporting events. What the hell is wrong with some of you people? And it is James Anastasio who cold cocked that guy and knocked him out. I do hope you go to prison. I, I don't I don't have any reservations about saying that. You know what? Might have had too much drink, might have been a bad judgment, might have been a whole lot of things. But guess what? You don't get to get away with this one for no reason. It's uncalled for, it's disgusting, it's ridiculous, and there's literally no reason that this should still be going on at professional sporting events. Like, I don't ever remember being a kid growing up and watching fights at sporting events. And maybe they happened all the time and I didn't see them. Um, maybe before the advent of social media, you know, these things happened all the time and we never saw them. But I, I can't I can't wrap my head around it. I, I really, really can't. Like, I, I can't understand for the life of me how somebody could do that. So I hope they found the guy. I hope it's arrested. If it's not James Anastasio and he's listening and watching, James, I'm sorry. Um, if it is you. You deserve everything you get. There you go. Okay. Um, let's pivot to the Atlanta Falcons here as they wrapped up OTAs yesterday. Um, and I uh, I heard something from, or read something rather, from offensive coordinator Dave Rangone, a um, former NFL quarterback and, and played at Louisville, uh, who's the offensive coordinator of Arthur Smith System, was there last year as well. Uh, and what he said was surprising from the standpoint of, I was going into this season under the presumption that there was a certain mentality about the quarterbacks and what they are capable of and what they're going to be asked to do this year. Well, to quote Dave Rangone, there are no limitations on the quarterbacks and what we're going to ask them to do. We're going to try to grow with them and evolve with them with what we think makes the most sense. 
Uh, okay. If you ask me, what makes the most sense is to ask very little of these quarterbacks because they're not proven capable commodities. And I'm not necessarily being an antagonist here to Dave Rangone. It's just one of those things where I thought and I assumed, like many did, that the plan would be to not throw too much at Marcus Mariota because he's not an accurate passer uh, and he's not a guy that traditionally in his past has been able to elevate other players. Um, that's number one. And number two, if you're using the rookie, it's never throw too much at him. Don't overload him with information. Simplify things. Break it down. Don't open up the entire playbook for him because they're rookies and they don't really have the depth to be able to do it in year one. Now, this could just be coach speak that there is no limitations on these quarterbacks. I don't believe it. I think there has to be some level of limitation on them. I, I, I guess you, you could take, you know, one or two plays here and there that you want to try with them and see where it goes. But if you're a competitive team, which the Falcons say that they're going to be, one or two plays could change the entire outcome of the game. So you have to be cautious with when and where you take those shots and how you take them and when you do them and everything else. And um, I appreciate the aggressiveness. And I do think Arthur Smith is a very innovative offensive mind in this league. And I think we will really find out the level of coach and the level of scheme that he has with these two quarterbacks. It's easy for Matt Ryan, for as capable as he is, to hide a lot of deficiencies. That is not the case. Marcus Mariota is not going to hide deficiencies. Neither is Desmond, Riz Desmond Ritter. They're going to expose them. Right? They'll get exposed with complicated scheme and tough things. So, um, you know, maybe you're not having limitations on them per se. You're just having limitations on the entire offense around them, which may be fair given what this offense is made of at this point in time. Well, it'll be interesting. We'll see. We head out to uh, to training camp next week, or mini mandatory mini camp rather, and and see what the team is made of. I'm excited to get out there and do it, uh, and, and get a chance to look at them firsthand. It's been a long time since I've had a chance to go cover the team up and close, um, and so I'm excited to get back out there, and I'll have a full report with you guys going forward. All right, uh, that'll do it for us here on this Friday. I'm hoping you guys have a wonderful weekend ahead. Be safe. Be smart. Don't hit any other fans, okay? And let's see if we still have a Braves winning streak when we get back here on Monday. Make sure you guys follow me on Twitter, at Mark Zeno. Follow us at Locked On ATL. Thanks for making A to Z one of your first listens every single day. Make your next listen, Hitting Hard with John Chuckery and ATL Day Ones with Jarvis Davis and Denitra Batiste and everybody here on the Locked On Sports Atlanta crew. Certainly appreciate it. You guys have a great weekend. See you Monday. Don't take any crap from anybody. See ya.